Hey everyone, this is a Jaxter. I'm just going to show you guys what you'll be able to make at the end of this video. So we have WASD movement or arrow movement. Um, we also have rotation, rotating your player and your head with the mouse, right? Like a tactical FPS. And the numbers are feeling pretty similar to Valorant. So like moving feels somewhat similar to Valorant. So yeah, that's... Uh, it for this video we also set up some environment the wall the cube so hope you guys are excited uh, hope you guys are excited about the tutorial series and this episode to get started uh, please leave a like please subscribe to the channel please click on the bell to get more notifications about tutorials in this tutorial series and more from the channel so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoy hey everyone it's a Jaxter uh, here for episode one of Valorant in Unity and C Sharp. So what we will be working on for this episode is we'll work on setting up the player controller script for our FPS shooter. Uh, and we have some numbers like movement speed that are kind of similar to Valorant. So let's get started. Whoops, that's not good. I just resize that. Okay, let's get started. So I'll click on the hierarchy and click on th right click 3D object and hit Q. And go to transform and reset. And on my X scale, I'll type in 50. And I'll do 50. And then I'll rename it to ground in the hierarchy. And I will go to my assets, right click, create, and select material. And I'll just call it ground as well. And I'll just make this green for grass. Do that, that's fine. Okay, so now we have our grass. Um, next thing we'll be working on is setting up some more props. So if you saw the introduction video, you'd see that I had a wall. Uh, that just helped me debug and shoot at and stuff and peek around and so let's make that real quick so cube, make a cube reset the transform and I'll do uh, five on the Z and five on the Y and just move it up so it's all the way on the ground okay then I have another prop that's just another cube just reset the transform and I'll just move it back and then move it up so it's above ground. And I just use this cube to kind of jump on and stuff like that. Because in Valorant you're jumping on boxes so we want to make sure that it feels similar to uh, in Valorant how you would be jumping. So now we have our environment set up so let's start making our player. So I'm going to first start off by creating another cube. Our player will be a cube for now. And I'll reset the transform, move him wherever you want. Uh, I'm just going to move him kind of you know, right here. And I will make him two on the Y scale, just to look more human like or humanoid like. And I'll rename it to player in the hierarchy. And then I'll drag the main camera and put it under player. And I'll reset the main camera transform. I'll move up the main camera transform to kind of head level. Okay. All right. So now let's get into some coding. So what I like to do when I make C sharp scripts is I'll make a folder called scripts. Let's go inside scripts and then let's create a C sharp script. And we'll just name this player controller. Okay. So, let's open up our player controller in Visual Studio. Okay. So now we have a fresh mono behavior class called player controller. I'm just going to delete these comments that come in. And let's start off by declaring some of the variables. Uh, for this episode, we'll have some variables in here like movement speed and... Uh, mouse sensitivity 
things that shouldn't necessarily belong in this uh, class and will eventually be moved out throughout the tutorial series. But uh, for today, for this episode, let's keep it simple and let's just get this thing working and let's get something up on the screen. So let's serialize field. I have a reference to the camera. So camera, player camera. This is the camera that we childed to our player. And next we will declare the public float mouse sensitivity equals 100f. And I'm just going to do get private set public float uh, x rotation another get private set and then private character controller just a reference to the character controller which we haven't added to the player yet but we will and then private float movement speed which we can actually just make a public for now and like I said we'll move out for example uh, for example movement speed you know in Valorant uh, there are a lot of abilities that can affect your movement speed so you wouldn't necessarily want to have it in the player controller class you kinda want to have those stats in their own class and whenever something you know changes a stat like Sage's slow or something you would update that one stat and then it would update wherever that stat was working throughout your code it's just a nicer and easier way to keep you know these types of things and make it easier to work with uh, so now we have that and in our start function let's just character controller equals get component character controller this is just assigning the reference to the actual character controller on our player will put this player controller on our player along with the character controller. Okay, so first thing we'll start off by uh, creating the movement. So handle movement will make a function and we'll call that inside the update function. Okay, so now we'll create two variables one for the horizontal input, like your left and right arrows, or your A and D, and the vertical, you know, vertical input like your W and S which will actually cause us to go forward in the Z direction so so we'll do vertical input equals input dot get axis vert uh, vertical and then float horizontal input equals input dot get axis horizontal so next we'll create the movement vector uh, so movement vector equals which will be a vector three, and we'll just say transform dot right times our horizontal input, right? Because that's the x-axis, and our A and D keys are moving us along the x-axis. Plus transform dot forward times vertical input, which vertical is really in this case, you know, forward and backward on the z-axis. So that's why we're multiplying it by transform dot forward, and so then all we need to do is just character controller dot move movement vector times movement speed times time dot delta time. All right, so now let's go back into Unity. Let's go to our player in the hierarchy. Add component first. We'll add the character controller. And then we'll add our player controller script that we just created. And let's just drag in our uh, main camera into the serialized field right here. Okay, so let's just save and then hit run. And hopefully we are moving. Yep, we are moving. Hooray. So, you know, you can come up to this and we are colliding. And you can also look around. You know, jiggle strafe like you do in Valorant uh, already. You know, we're starting to see things come together. I also, the movement speed feels pretty similar to Valorant. Not exact, but uh, pretty similar. I didn't spend hours just, you know, going back and forth. But it feels similar. So let's go back to the player controller. Next thing. Oh, yes. So movement vector times movement speed times dot and dot tells time. 
um, if you let's hit play again if you are going vertical right or forward and back or you're going horizontal you're going at a certain speed right now the way we set it up but if you go diagonal you actually go faster right so what we need to do is we need to ensure that we are not doing that and we need to clamp this movement vector so we'll say uh, vector 3 dot magnitude clamp clamp magnitude and then max length will be 1 magnitude is just the length of the vector uh, and there you know I think we learned about this in calculus or something um, so we just want the length to be a, a unit vector right and just tell us what direction to go in or not necessarily a unit vector but max a unit vector um, so now we go back to unity and now when we go in diagonal we'll go back we'll go the same speed as we do when we're going horizontal or forward and backward so now let's go back to visual studio and next we'll work on the mouse look function which is just you know if I'm moving back and forth I'm going up and down with my gun sorry about that I hit the mic and then if I go right or left I'm you know turning my body right so when I'm turning my body when I move uh, around the y-axis and when I'm moving around the x-axis I'm only moving my head so what we'll want to do is first get the mouse X we'll just get the input amounts and not access get what was it oh yes it is it get access mouse X times mouse sensitivity times time dot depth of time and then we'll get the mouse Y okay let's scroll down a little all right so we have the X rotation variable that we um, created earlier and so we'll say X rotation minus equal mouse Y whoops thanks visual studio mouse Y and right because when you're going up this is mouse Y you are looking up and you're rotating across the x-axis right you're rotating around this thing so that's what we do okay and then we want to we want to update the camera transform local rotation and then set it equal to quaternion dot Euler and then we'll say X rotation and then just set the Y and the Z to zero next when we are moving horizontally around the y-axis we uh, update the transform so rotate dot vector 3 dot up because we're uh, rotating around the y-axis times mouse X Oops. okay so let's make sure we call this function in the update and let's go back to unity hit play and as you can see we are rotating as we are moving uh, which is awesome so now if I go up 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 I'm doing flips right which is not natural so let's fix that let's go to Visual Studio and let's clamp this X rotation between negative 90 and 90 right like we can't go past a certain point because our head doesn't go like do things like that so x rotation equals math f dot clamp and then say x rotation and then the min value will be negative 90 f and 90 f and then let's just go back to unity let's hit play so now if I go up I'm going up I'm going up nothing's happening if I'm going down if I'm going down so now we have successfully clamped that value and we can't do any crazy things with our head and next thing is and the last thing I guess is to get rid of this cursor it's kind of annoying you know so let's go inside of our player controller script and in our start function let's just say 
uh, cursor dot lock state equals cursor lock mode dot locked. And if we go back to Unity, hit play, no more cursor. And so now it's feeling a lot like the beginnings of a first person shooter, a tactical first person shooter. Uh, I can go around peak corners, you know, cool stuff like that. Um, so that's it for this episode. We have movement, we have mouse look, and the beginnings of our project. We've made a player and have our camera. Um, so yeah, next episode we will be working on jump and a couple other things like holding shift to walk, some more specific mechanics to the tactical FPS genre. And so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope it feels good to make something, you know, this quick and see see it come to fruition. Um, if you like this video, please like, please leave a comment, please subscribe to the channel, and also remember to click that bell so you can get notifications about tutorials um, from this tutorial series, but also more tutorials. Um, I'm going to be branching out to different genres and looking at different game mechanics. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you. Ajaxter out.